Welcome to topic one of network traffic analysis module. In this module, we will first study the importance of network security and its different aspects. And then we will move forward with the machine learning approach for network security. So why network security? Easiest way for attacker to gain access into the infrastructure is network. And protecting computer networks and network accessible endpoints from the malice, from the misuse, and from the denial. A perfect example for a network security control is firewall, which is a best known network defense system enforcing access control policies and filtering unauthorized traffic between artifacts in the network. However, limited to packet-based information transmission. That is, a full stream of data is divided into packets, and packets represent the transmission origin, destination, and information are content. Packets are sent through network layer, and transport layer reconstructs all packets occurring at the session layer or layers above it. Network security is actually talking about the OSI models and the TCP IP models. In the OSI model, we have seven layers, whereas in the TCP IP models, few of the layers are merged and therefore there are four layers in the TCP IP model. Now, it is very important when we look at the network security to also understand the theory of network defense. Defending any complicated system is very complex. So we need to engage the attackers which are lying or running on the network. And we should not make any assumption about reliability of any one of the component. There are multiple components of the network security. So we have access control and authentication. We have intrusion detection. We also have to work on the detection of in-network attackers. And we also have to look at the data centric security. And we also need to have few decoys as well in the network, which will be providing insider attacker view to the network security specialist. Let's take a look at the first domain, which is access control and authentication. Access control and authentication provides users to interact with the network and it control the authorization of the users through roles or host. That is, it defines who can access which segments of a network. So example is a firewall which control the access by predefined policies. There will be certain URLs which will be blocked by the firewall. For example, we can use the IP tables firewall of the Linux to provide the IP level rule set. The IP table control policies ensures that any users who are granted access can enter in the network. Now, we also have passive access control systems. An example is that an attacker who gains control of a server in this IP subnet can access the server because the passive authentication method relies on a single property, the connection's origin, to grant or deny access. Now, access control and authentication. To obtain more information, for instance, the connection origin as a signal, we also have cryptographic keys, for example, the SSH key, the private knowledge, the distributed mechanism, that is the multi-factor authentication divides authentication into multiple breakups, the authentication into multiple parts. So the purpose of distributed mechanism is to, is to make hard the authentication as much as possible. That's why it is called multi-factor authentication. So we have multiple parts of an authentication. Access control and authentication is the primary means of network defense. So we actually stop the attackers from accessing the resources which are present on the network. So this is the first line of defense. Another important component of the network theory of defense is intrusion detection. 
Intrusion detection is actually checking in-depth breaches of the network by making passive observations. So for example, in the case of Snort, which is collecting all the packets and generating logs. So a machine learning expert is actually making the observations on the logs which are generated by the Snort. On the other hand, we have the intrusion prevention system, which is an improvement to the passive intrusion detection system. So they are not passive in nature. They are, they are actually able to intercept the direct line of the communication between the source and destination and automatically act on the detected anomalies as well. So real time packet sniffing is a requirement for any type of intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system. We have already seen that we have called, we have got SPI system and DPI systems as well. So stateful packet inspection and deep packet inspection. So deep packet inspection and stateful packet inspection, both are the requirements for intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. Now, we also have to work on the detection of in-network atta attackers as well. So our assumptions is that attackers penetrated the network perimeter and be operating within the trusted boundary of your infrastructure. So this means that the people are coming in and going out as well. And it's not possible that you always protect all or you implement all the security controls on your perimeters. So you have to you have to have a mechanism to detect the in network attackers as well. So for example, you have the attackers who have passed the access control mechanism or they have avoided the detection by the intrusion detection or prevention system. So just protecting the perimeter is not sufficient. We need to have a well designed system which need to work on detecting in network attackers as well. Regardless attackers are intruders or corrupted insiders, the system administrators must instrument their infrastructure. They have to monitor and they have to perform logging to increase the visibility between use servers actually. So what we are emphasizing on this slide is that we need to have a mechanism to detect the insider's attack as well because there could be a software misconfiguration. There could be any service whose code is not secure actually and turns out to be malicious at some point in time. So that's why we need to have a mechanism to detect the insider's attacker. All of these components are important when we are designing our machine learning based security system. So we have to do the pattern mining. We have to focus on the anomaly detection. So in, in the quest of providing network security, we also have to focus on the network segmentation as well. So we have to divide the network because large organizations are having very huge and big networks. So like for example, 3000 nodes, 4000 nodes is just happening nowadays. So we have to provide a proper segmentation of a network as well. We need to limit the damage caused by in-network attackers. So we have to, for example, we have to provide physical VLANs, we have to have other mechanisms that are used in the network segmentation. The purpose is to narrow the channel uh, which is available to attackers for pivoting. So what attackers do is that they find the uh, low hanging fruit in the network. So they find any machine which is less secure and then they pivot around. So from one machine, they go to the other machine. They, they use the mechanism of pass the hash, for example. So from one machine, they go to the other and from the, from the other machine, they, they move around. So we need to have a proper network segmentation. The purpose is to separate public facing system from high valued central information servers and allow only closely guarded or monitored API access between the net different set, uh, network segments. Another important practice is, practice is micro segmentation, the practice of segmenting a network into various sections. So based on elements logical function, for example, we can have a micro segment for databases, we can have a micro segment for web servers as well. 
So we simplify the network and the management of access control policies as well. This micro segmentation is very, very important in the context of cloud as well. So for example, if we have a set of containers, so what we do is that we put them into a micro segment as per their logical function. However, there's a drawback as well. That is changes in the network must be accurately reflected in the segmentation scheme. So challenging to manage as the complexity of the system increase, increases. We need to have a mechanism to have a micro segmentation which is auto configuration possible in which auto configuration is possible so any change which is made to the network security policy is actually implemented on all micro segments of the network another important aspect of the network theory of defense or component is data centric security so data centric security is assuming that perimeter is compromised or your perimeter is not that secure and attacker gain access to a network segment containing user credentials. Now data stored within the network segment is at risk of being stolen. The only way to limit the damage is to employ a data centric view of the security. So what we do is that we protect the data or all those segments of the network which contains the data. Meaning the data might not be of much value to an attacker. We, we need to make the data in a form that even if the attacker is inside the network segment, if the attacker has stolen the credentials of the machines which are storing the data, still it is not of any important or importance or value to an attacker. So examples of the data centric security, what we do is that we encrypt the data which is stored in a way to achieve data centric security. So attackers cannot easily make use of the stolen credentials. However, continuously encrypting and decrypting the data can come with unrealistically high resource requirements. There are few efforts in the research in this direction as well, like for example, the CryptDB, like for example, the homomorphic encryption as well, which allows us to perform data analysis on the encrypted data. Chief among them, the best approach or the pioneering approach is the Gentry's approach, which is called BGV scheme, which is talking about the, uh, the, encrypt, the performing computation on the encrypted data. Now, one last component of the network theory of defense is the use of decoys or honeypots. Decoy is intended for gathering information about the attacker. So you lure the attacker. You provide the attackers the easiest target within different segments of the network. This is another approach which is called deception-based security. The goal is to learn about the attacker methodology and goals and gather the forensic information for performing analysis on the attacker action. So you want to know the attacker before it goes on the actual target. You want to slow down the attacker. So what decoys are placed in the environment to experience a sizable volume of attacks actually. But one important thing, which is really, really important in the context of machine learning is that it is useful for collecting label training data for research and for improving the attack detection models, which are used in different security controls. So the data that we gather through honeypots, now we need to make the honeypots as well as realistic as possible. This is one of the major challenge in the use of decoys that the decoys are easily identifiable. So there are efforts which we are also doing to make the honeypots as realistic as possible with the help of artificial intelligence. Another important point is that the data that is collected from the honeypots is then used as a label training data for different security controls like firewall, like intrusion detection system, like intrusion prevention system. So it is a kind of MIUC, 
we already have seen the the concept of indicator of compromise so now we are exploring the possibility of MIOC which is a machine learning based IOC and that will be input to the other machine learning infrastructure or security controls that are used on the network and that are using the machine learning capabilities for the detection of attacker. This is all from this topic and I see you in the next topic. Thank you.